YouTube video where basically a guy goes in the Apple store and he buys the iPhone and then he like runs out and he has his camera and he's like filming himself and he runs to like the nearby coffee shop and he starts unpacking it like as soon as possible. He's like one of the first people to buy the iPhone. So people were just absolutely, there was a lot of crazy surrounding it. And um, the initial reviews kind of reflected this sentiment. Walt Mossberg says the iPhone is unbalanced, beautiful and breakthrough handheld computer. And, you know, from uh, PC Magazine, best portable media player ever. It's possibly the most fun we've ever had with a handheld You know, we can't just think. I mean, we're kind of used to the iPhone and Android and Droid and all these really cool smartphones coming out nowadays. But you've got to think, like, before then, it was pretty boring. Using a smartphone was not really a fun experience. So <clears throat> the sales, initial sales of the iPhone reflect this as well. Uh, so it came out on June 29th. And uh, the third quarter ended June 30th at midnight. So it, it came out June 29th at 6 p.m. That's when it started being sold. So in 30 hours, they sold 270,000. That's how it was their third quarter sales, in just 30 hours. And um, in 2008, 13.7 million. And then in 2009, 81% growth year over year for 25 million. So I think there's like 40, 50, actually all over the world, I think there's like 60 or 70 million iPhones in use. And uh, it's also made a big impact in the market share. Um, back in 2006, really the only big players were RIM for BlackBerry. And uh, Windows Mobile was also really popular, and so was the Palm Trio and Palm. Uh, but now you can see Apple's taking a big bite out of Palm. And, and actually, it was just last quarter that Apple, uh, the iPhone OS, uh, under uh, um, it basically overtook Microsoft's market share for the first time. So it's a big player, and who knows if it's going to overtake BlackBerry. We don't know a year from now or two years from now. Uh, so there I'm just giving you a picture of like how much of an impact this has made, just in pure like sales and market share terms. And so uh, you know, so later on when it comes to regulation, you know, regulators tend to pay attention to the more popular technologies and kind of ignore the ones that are not. And so, now the iPhone has a lot of features. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not giving you a sales pitch or anything. I'm going to talk about the features as it relates to telecommunications, uh, because it's turned out to be really important when it comes to what the FCC undertook in, in terms of its inquiry in Apple. So the first, the major thing in terms of telecommunications is that Apple has an agreement with AT&T. Uh, anytime you buy an iPhone, you're required to sign a two-year agreement with AT&T. The iPhone is locked. AT&T's network, so if you buy one, you can't use it on T-Mobile. Now, you can unlock the iPhone, uh, but you void your warranty, basically. So it means if, if it breaks for whatever reason, you can't get it repaired. And um, there's no sanction unlocking from AT&T on this one device. So AT&T actually has an official policy. They will gladly unlock your phone. Uh, this is not the iPhone, another phone. They'll gladly unlock your phone after a two -year con uh, your two-year contract is up. Uh, with the exception of the iPhone. And there was a, an AT&T executive who went on record and he said, like, well, that's different. He just said that blankly. So people were like, well, no, oh, crap. Um, and, but it doesn't mean that the iPhone can't be unlocked officially, unofficially. Um, in Finland, this blogger, he posted this blog post about how basically the company Sonera, which is kind of like AT&T in Finland, they are very glad to unlock your phone after two years. and so he showed a screenshot of iTunes, and it says, thank you for you know, using the iPhone. It is now unlocked, like beautiful, official unlock of the iPhone. But with AT&T, that's not the case. And no one knows if it ever will be the case unless the FCC changes the entire phone handset exclusivity uh, landscape. What is what's not with AT&T? I, 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 just, I just didn't get the predicate of the sentence. What's not with AT&T? You said it. You said it. Yeah, Finland. And then you said it's not with AT&T. I want to know what the it was. What's not? Oh, with in Finland, the AT&T equivalent, Sonera, they'll unlock your phone after two years, after your contract is expired. Oh, but they it, unlock it for you. Yeah, they'll unlock it for That's you. That's not another company that wants your business. Oh no, it, it's a telecom provider in Finland. Oh. Okay. Um, so it's just an example of. You know. oh, sorry, I, I was confused. You said they they can unlock your phone, but they won't. I mean, you said. You said, sort of said two contradictory things, like oh. you can unlock the phone, but 
Oh, you can unlock it unofficially using hacks. Oh, stuff. okay, I wasn't sure that's what I'm Oh, yeah, okay. you know, this stuff, I've just been reading this stuff for years, and it's, I, I need to communicate that to you. The irony um, of it is, that's how Steve Jobs but, started start hacking. Oh, right. He, actually, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, they sold a blue box in that's the 70s right, yeah. where you got free phone calls, and they, they called the Pope for free. Um, but, so, so this is actually a big deal, the fact that just the iPhone, you can't get an official unlock. With every other phone you buy from AT&T, you can. And then, but the benefit to cons consumers is that the iPhone is very cheap. It's only $99 to buy the cheapest one. Um, if you go to Hong Kong, where, or, yeah, Hong Kong, the law states that you cannot lock a device to a manufacturer, or if you do, you also have to provide the unlocked version. If you go there and you want to buy an iPhone, it's like $850. If you go on eBay and you try to get an unlocked <coughs> iPhone, the, the highest end one, it's again like $800, and $700, $800, $900, depending on the condition, if it's new or used. Um, but for consumers, that's obviously a big benefit, even though you are contractually obligated to use their service. And over the two years, you end up paying you know, a couple thousand dollars uh, for your contract. So. I'm just going to explain the iPhone dialing function. It seems kind of weird to like say you know a phone dials, um, but it is important when it comes to the argument that Apple's had with the FCC. So over here, this is the main screen of the iPhone, and that's the phone button. You click the phone button, and that's your dial pad. And you've got some features down here. So uh, this is a better screenshot. So yeah, like in any other phone, the favorites, you know, tap once to call. You know, resets, missed calls, contact list. But vo uh, voicemail is really important. It's actually a pretty cool feature because what you can do is rather than having to call a number to, and then listen to all those voicemails and stuff, um, you can just get them all listed for you and you can play whichever one you want or not listen to them at all. So if, there, if, if Patel Ravi is like, this guy's trying to collect bills and stuff, or he's like harassing you all the time, uh, you can just delete his voicemail and not even listen to it. <laughs> so, that, so Apple is very protective of their the feature. And they, they really hyped up this feature because it was new. It was a new feature in the industry. And I think now, like Android phones, and I think they have that feature now. So it's not really an exclusive thing anymore. So there were a lot of common complaints about the iPhone. It didn't have like 3G, but now it does. Um, doesn't have flash support, but the, by far the biggest uh, complaint about the iPhone was that you couldn't run third-party applications. It was completely Apple's territory. Only Apple could program for it and everything. So then to solve this problem, they in March 2008, they released the SDK, which is a software development kit. And it's a way for anybody to write an application and sell it on the iPhone. And they sell it using the App Store. So the whole point is you pay $99 to get a license to submit your applications to Apple. If you set a price, Apple takes 30% of the cut. There's no credit card fees. It's pretty simple. They've advertised the fact that it's really simple. There's no additional fees and everything. If you publish a free app, it's free. You don't even have to pay. All you have to do is pay the $99. You don't have to pay anything. Um, but the thing is, Apple is the gatekeeper. So you have to submit an application, and then Apple gets to decide whether or not they want it to be on the iPhone, uh, in the App Store. And, um, but then, you know, it's extremely easy to use uh, for users. And that's kind of the argument they were making, is that now users can go on this App Store, and then they can check out some applications. If they see one they like, they just press, you know, 